morning everyone. We're in New Brunswick, St. Leonard. We have our empty flatbed behind us. We're pulling this to Valcourt, Quebec. I'm gonna grab a load there. stop last night but I got a little tired so we ended up stopping here at St. Leonard a, a half hour before that. So I only have five and a half hours to do today so it's not that long. I have an idea of where I want to stop. There's a nice rest area just down the road from Valcourt. Hopefully the parking doesn't fill up by the time I get there but I have a few things I need to get done today since I have such a short day. I'm going to stop in Edmondson. There's a giant tiger sort of like another version of like a, a small Walmart sort of in Canada. I'm going to go there and get some groceries. Uh, I'm going to have a shower and do my laundry. Because I'm running out of laundry. I've been on the road that long. <laughs> Not used to that anymore, eh? So we got to do some laundry. I'm going to get that all done at the truck stop there. And then we're going to head over to Valcourt or to the area there and try to get a parking spot nearby. Got my laundry right here, all ready to go. Got my breakfast right here, all ready to go. Phone's plugged in and charging, so if that stays charged, you never know when you're gonna need it. Dash camera is running, that stays running 24 seven. But you wanna make sure before you get on the road and move, make sure that that's recording, just in case something happens or someone tries something funny. Okay, 41 kilometers, just under 30 miles. Lights are on for safety. Of dust on here. What is what's going on here? Man, these gauges they just attract all the dust. All the dust. Love dust. Love it. Dust loves me. It is not mutual. I think I go out around. No, I go out here. That's right. Okay, let's just double check, make sure my trailer's gonna come with me. Roll forward. Spike the brakes. Brakes work. Roll forward. Brakes disengage. And they release. Okay. I went for a walk in town here yesterday when I got here just to stretch my legs a little bit and get some exercise it's actually a nice little town we're right on the US border with Maine I didn't even realize that there's a walk down the street here about a quarter mile and you're right at the US border oh yeah there's a Tim Hortons over here I forgot I was gonna walk over here and grab a Timmy's this morning. I got truck stop coffee instead. Oh well. I went for my walk yesterday. It's a nice little town. Those hills in the background there, like way out there, that's Maine. I don't know if you can see it or not. This camera is designed to give you a wide angle shot, not a zoomed in shot. Right down that road, goes right into the U.S. Really cool little town. Canada up here. 
Edmondson. Edmondston? Edmondston. Still wasn't saying it right. It's on the sign right here on the right. Edmundston. Not Edmonton, Edmundston. Close. It's like Edmonton's cousin. I should have gone. I should have gone. That car wasn't using a signal, so I didn't know if he was coming straight or not. He's using a signal. I want to let him go first. There's no one behind me I'm holding up. Hurry up there, FedEx. There you go. No need for me to hold him up. All he'll do is tailgate me. Ouch! Josh, pay attention to your shifting. been here for three hours 39 minutes got a lot done though uh, got my laundry done it's all hanging up in the back here a lot of it is anyway so I don't dry everything and I had a shower and I went and did some grocery shopping at Giant Tiger next door so got everything done I'm good for the rest of my trip now got food and I'm clean and I got clean clothes so now we got to go into Quebec and find a parking spot near Valcourt I hope there's gonna be one in that rest area that's right close by there, but now we're getting there a little later and I was thinking I would. Mm, hopefully we'll find a spot there. We'll figure it out. It always works out. Let's get on the road. We're ready. Let's rock and roll. Or we can just wait for this guy. A lot of RVs in this parking lot. The whole time I've been here, they've been parking all over the place, like right out in the in the middle of the yard. Because I guess they're they're not able to back up. A lot of them just parking all over the place. They're blocking truckers in, and guys had to go and start yelling at them to get them to move. And they park their uh, their RVs right in front of trucks and just go inside and just stay in there for two hours, blocking everybody in. Uh, apparently, it's a common thing here. It's a little issue they're dealing with or not dealing with. I don't know talking to other drivers that are saying yeah it happens all the time it's so frustrating or they'll come in and they'll take up like five spots with three trailers and, you know pop out all their slides and then camp in the parking lot for uh for you know the weekend <laughs> and they'll go over to the casino here right there's a casino right there play slots all night meanwhile they're blocking all the <laughs> oh well oh well right what can i do about it I don't know what's going on over here. This driver up here installed or something. 100 meters, turn right on to my street. This is a great, great stopping place though. Because there's a there's Dollarama right here, a little strip mall beside me here. Uh, restaurants all around here within walking distance. There's Giant Tiger right there on the left. That's where I went grocery shopping. Uh, they got a Tim Hortons inside, four different restaurants inside the building. They got a Burger King across the street. Got a casino over there. Lots of parking. They even have a pet wash. They have a car wash, a truck wash. Oh, I don't know if they have a truck wash. Sorry, they have a car wash and they have a pet wash. You can take your pet in there and wash them. Oh, buddy, we're not allowed to park on the street though. 100 meters, turn right on, Gray Rock Road, and then take the entrance to the right into 150 meters. Go around. Yeah, there were signs all over inside saying we're not allowed to park on the street. 
but uh, I don't know what happened there. All right. It's a little bit of chaos, I'm gonna admit. This place is chaotic. It's very busy, very busy. There's another parking lot right across the street there where you can park. Take the entrance to the ride on Highway 2 RTE to Quebec. The fish and chips restaurant over here, a pizza place. Uh, your showers inside, laundry. The laundry is a little different than usual though. You gotta go to the front desk and pay, and then you just use their washing machines in their back room that they use to wash all of their towels for the showers and stuff. But it works, you just gotta go and ask. another restaurant in the casino yet. Hey, look at this sign here, just filled with different businesses. A really one-stop shop for everything. Continue on this road for 79 kilometers. Oh, and there's a hospital right there too, just in case. Just in case you have a couple too many burgers at Burger King. They got you right there. inside New Brunswick from Quebec, up in northern New Brunswick. close to Quebec City. We're just gonna bypass it here on the uh, east side of the river. Most of the city's on the other side. We're running alongside the St. Lawrence River. Uh, one of the most historic rivers in Canada. This is where the whole country started, really. And all the way down here in Quebec City is one of the oldest cities in North America. I think it was settled in uh, 1500s. Am I right on that, Quebec? Really old city. I'm hoping there's gonna be parking for me at the rest area, because we're gonna be getting there kinda late. A little later than I wanted to, but it seems to be the story of every day. And every day seems to work out, so we'll figure it out. If there's no parking there, well, uh, We'll find something somewhere. We always do. 
this part of Quebec is very French. Very French. Around Montreal, I'd say it's a little more bilingual. It's a little closer to Ontario. But you go into the small towns up here, and you'll find lots of people that, that do not speak English, or don't speak it fluently, at least. You can still get by, but... Definitely feels like you're in a completely different country. And I figured out how Quebec gets around not putting English on their road signs. Because they don't have any English on any road signs, right? It's all French. Instead of putting English, their language police, I'm guessing, won't allow them to put English on their signs. So instead of that, they put pictures. So that the English people driving through can look at the pictures and understand what they're trying to tell you. So they'll have the writing in French and then they'll have like a picture beside it. Like for no littering, they'll have, for example, they'll have like a, an open can with a red, you know, red circle around it with a cross through it. So that obviously means no littering. For the scales that we go into as truckers, instead of putting in English, you know, scale ahead, they'll put a picture of a truck on a scale, on the sign, with an arrow pointing to the scale. So that way you can tell. It's like reading pictures. It's like a big picture book going down the highway. Made it to the rest area and there was parking here. I think those spots there are all for RVs. Uh, there's several open ones here still, so that's good. Another one of our trucks is down over there, one of our van trucks. This is where we sit. We spend the night here. It's nice and quiet. Oh, this guy's fuel cap is off. I wonder if he knows? I'll have to see if I can get a hold of him there. He might be sleeping. Hopefully that doesn't mean that someone was trying to steal his fuel. But I'm guessing last time he filled up, he probably forgot to put the cap back on. Good thing it's got that string on there to hold it in there, right? See, I don't want to touch this truck. I'd be worried that if, you know, I'd be putting it back on for him and then he would notice that, that he would think that it was me that was trying to steal fuel. I'll have to check to see if he's awake or not. I don't really want to wake him up. But maybe I can leave a note for him. Maybe I'll leave a note for him saying that, hey, your passenger side fuel cap is off. Just so you know. <laughs> Anyways, we're just down the road from Valcourt. I don't really know where to go because apparently this complex I'm going to is just massive. I'll figure it out tomorrow in the morning. For now, I'm just going to get a good sleep. It's going to be a long day tomorrow. Because we've got to load, get it tied down. And I have 17 hours to my first drop in, uh, I think it's called Schreiber, Ontario. Which is, up, I think, past Sudbury. So we're not going to quite get there tomorrow yet. But it'll be a full day of driving as far as I possibly can get tomorrow. So i got to get a good sleep tonight. So it was a lot of empty miles to get here. It's really too bad that that load fell through on me. The one I was supposed to pick up in New Brunswick is right around Edmondson. Edmonds, I still can't say it. Edmonston. It was right around there. I had this load. I was supposed to tarp it. I think it was lumber of some kind. I was going to tarp it and it had to go to Wisconsin. And from Wisconsin, it's a lot easier to get home from there and just go through uh, on the U.S. side. Now we're going through on the Canadian side, which is fine because it's summertime. The roads are just really narrow and kind of dangerous up there with the way some guys drive. But oh, this, this will get me home too. It's just I had a lot more empty miles than I was expecting. But that's trucking, right? That's, sometimes that happens. There's not a lot of freight moving out of the Maritimes, and the freight that is moving out of there, a lot of the time the big, big companies that are based out there and that do all their work out there, they gobble everything up. And uh, we don't do a lot. Like, we don't have a lot going on out there. We do have trucks out there all the time, but very often they're van trucks, because I used to go there when I was pulling vans, right? Dry van? And uh, I would always haul peat moss out of there, down south to the U.S., like to Alabama. 
and then I'd go back up to Georgia for a reload and come back up to Ontario. But that was back in the day when I was gone for like four weeks at a time. So to get a flatbed load out of there, I guess it's a little different. I've never been on that side of it. I don't find my own loads. That's what they get paid to do. They, uh, they find the loads for me in the office, and they take care of all those headaches, and I'm very thankful to them for that. If you guys are watching, thank you. I appreciate it a lot. They book the loads, and uh, they send all the info through to my computer here, and then I go get the load, and I bring it to where it needs to be. I've got enough headaches dealing with uh, you know, taking care of this truck and uh, balancing everything else in life that it's just nice to have that big headache not on me. Thanks for watching today anyway. I uh, appreciate it. I'll see you right here tomorrow. Be safe, stay safe, and drive safe. Talking to you.